The Ontario experience is the next best thing to going on the adventure yourself. And who knows, this unique show just might give you some ideas for your next fishing or hunting trip. We're back up in Ontario. This time, we're going after grouse. I brought my best friend with four legs, Ricky, on this trip. You know, we were up here a few weeks ago at Whitefish Lodge and Outpost Camps on a bear hunt. And every time we went back to our stand on the UTV, we saw 10, 15 grouse every single day. I thought to myself, why have I never grouse hunted in the Algoma region? I've, I've had lots of luck over in Sunset Country, shot lots of grouse over there. So we thought this time, we're gonna load up and we're gonna go uh, try our luck in the Algoma region for grouse. I have a feeling we're gonna have a ton of success. Let's go see how many grouse we can flush. Come on, bud. Come on, Ricky. Under grouse. Let's go get them, girl. Come on. there for sure at one point. It's so funny watching the dog when they get so excited like that you know there was at least a bird in the vicinity not too long ago and we got we had some rain this morning so we uh that wet ground will hold that scent for the dogs longer and we're actually going into the wind so that wind is blowing right at us which is a perfect situation for dogs. The scent is blowing typically if you're blow, going with the wind the, the scent is getting blown away from the dog it makes it harder for them to pick up the scent so get a few birds today. Oh, what cop? Got him, Ricky, get him! Go get him! Hutch him up! Got it, girl! Here, give, give, give. Look at that! So there's a woodcock. Look at that long beak on that. They're really unique looking birds, but like I said before, they are extremely tasty, just like a, a rough grouse. So if you get a few of these bonus birds, they, again, they don't go against your limit, but they, uh, they are extremely tasty and they are abundant up here in Ontario. Get it, Ricky. Go get it, girl. Touch it up. Good girl. Come. Good girl. First cross of the trip. And a girl give, give. All right, yes. There we go. Ricky and I have been uh, coming up here for years. We both actually started uh, hunting together in Ontario. We both cut our teeth in Ontario uh, grouse hunting together. So that's real cool. Her and I have been coming up here for the last five or six years, minus obviously the little break we had to take because of the pandemic. But uh, we're back up here again, and it's a first grouse hunt. Gross hunting trip, first day, first bird. She's got her nose, we're back on track. There's no break in that line. So it's definitely a, a male, a rooster. And then we got, roosters have two to three dots on these tail, these little tail feathers on the back side, where hens have zero or one. So that's how you tell if, there's, if they're roosters or if they're hens. Uh, growing up, my dad took my brother and I hunting all the time as youth back in Minnesota. And whenever we would shoot a grouse, the first thing I'd do is I'd go grab the grouse and I'd check it to see if it was a rooster or a hen, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's just a beautiful fan. And we would take them and spread them and dry them out and pin them, pin them to the wall in our bedroom. It's just, it's just a memento. It's just a, a memory that we'd always have. I actually have a friend back in Minnesota, Nicole Larson. She does art on these things. She would take, if you send her a photo and send her one of your fans, she'll dry it out and she'll actually paint that photo right off the, right on the fan. It's super cool. It's just a cool memory that you can put in. Remember your grouse hunting experiences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was one here. <laughs> That's how they react when there was something very fresh. 
Come on, gotta be close. Come on. Get in here. Who's there, huh? Oh, there she goes. Ricky, freeze, freeze, freeze. Go get it, Ricky, go get it! <laughs> that was crazy. That was unbelievable. The thing just was froze in time. It was just like it wasn't moving, and this a branch was coming out, and I thought, is that part of that branch? And then his head bobbed one time, and then I knew it was a grouse, but I, I definitely wanted to get her to freeze because you just don't know. I mean, if that grouse got up, you're just not going to get a second shot. Yep. That a good girl. So we're doing a little bit of everything. We're doing some road hunting. We're doing some, some walking. Road hunting gives her a break. But I don't know if you guys saw that, but that grouse was just stuck, just stretched way out, and there was actually a branch coming into, the, into this path, this walking path, and... And, and then it moved a little bit, and I go, oh, it's definitely a grouse, but I actually told her to freeze because I didn't want her to go after it. Because if you look at what we're hunting right now, that if, if a bird flies two feet into the woods from here, you are definitely not getting a shot at it. So I, I froze her so I was safe uh, when I was shooting. And then when I shot it, she uh, saw that that thing rolled and started flapping, so it was a lot of fun she went after. And good teamwork so far, so we're going to get a few more of these grouse. This week we're going to be chasing grouse a number of different ways. Uh, the traditional walking, there's just, the nice thing about Ontario, there's thousands and thousands of miles of walking trails, which is what a lot of people do, and, and the traditional people think that that's the only way to grouse hunt, which is not true. Um, actually, there's, you can chase grouse, uh, hunt for grouse with ATV, side-by-sides, and truck like we're doing today a little bit. Um, you know, there's a number of different kinds of roads that, that you can hunt. Uh, in Ontario, there's the two-track, one-lane, one-way road, which is what we're on right now, and uh, there's also the the logging roads, which is the two-way. And there's different rules and regulations when it comes to the different roads too. Uh, a two-lane, you have to actually, before you even load your gun, you have to be off the road completely, down in the ditch, and and you can't shoot across the road in any road, whether it be a two-track. Uh, uh, logging, two-way road, whatever it may be. So you just got to be careful on, on uh, what you're doing uh, when you're shooting your gun. Uh, a lot of people actually look down on their nose when it comes to road hunting, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. Because number one, not everybody can walk 20, 30 miles in a day. And we're up here for a weekend, so we're going to be walking a lot. And the other thing is, is like I, I do road hunting and I walk one reason is I give my dog a break. She gets super tired. She'd be sore tomorrow if we walked all day. So it's a nice little break for her. And road hunting can be very fruitful. You're covering a lot of ground. You're going through a lot of birds. We're actually up here early season and it's extremely hard to see grouse uh, in the woods right now. So it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely not super easy. What a lot of people think like, oh, you're just road hunting. You're just picking off a lot of birds on the road, which you're not. So it's we're doing it a number of different ways. It's uh, all legal, all ethical, and it's extremely fun. You know, it comes to hunting out of a vehicle or an ATV, you got to remember you can't have a loaded, uh, loaded weapon, whether it's in your case or not. You can't have any ammo in your chamber or in the magazine. Um, you have to stop the vehicle, get out, load the gun, and, and walk back. Back in Minnesota, where I'm from, you actually have to shut your vehicle off so I, I, I use that methodology even up here in Ontario, which it, I talked to a CEO and he said you don't actually have to shut your vehicle off, but I think it's a good idea. You know, it just adds to the, to, to the hunt too, so it just makes it a little bit more fair in my opinion. Because that, that engine, if you actually drive by a grouse, uh, a grouse will not usually take off or anything, they just stand there, just so used, to, so used to vehicles for whatever reason. But anyway, so you have to make sure that you unload your gun uh, before you get back in your vehicle. You can't have a loaded gun in your vehicle. You can't shoot out of the vehicle. So just make sure you follow all the laws and regulations. Yeah. 
sure he's already stopped. So we're just gonna get up and pull over here. Let's go. Come on, Ricky. Ricky, come. Look at Ricky. Watch it up. Good girl. Bring it here. Bring it here, girl. Come. Come. Come on, girl. Good girl. Good. Yep. Yep. Good girl. Look at that. A little spruce. Look how uh, similar a pen spruce grouse is to a, a roughie. It's, it's tough to tell, but you can actually, it's actually a, a young female spruce. Look at the tail. It's totally different than a rough grouse. Actually, a male would just have solid solid bars right here as opposed to a female having a little bit more coloration in there so awesome road hunting is working one thing you got to make sure you're doing when you're hunting with your dog i mean it's it's september and you get cooler temps but it doesn't matter if it's hot or cold these dogs are expending a lot of energy and they need a lot of water just like humans do so probably more so actually they're working way harder than we are on a normal basis so you gotta take care of your pooches, man. Get make sure they got a lot of water. They're doing all the work and they're making this a whole lot more fun. So there's two questions I get asked all the time when it comes to the border, crossing the border. One is, is it hard to get your pet across? And it's not. All you really need to is to make sure that her records, her veterinary records, her shots, and everything else are up to date. Other than that, there is really no, nothing that you have to worry about. Bring these with you. They'll, uh, they'll ask you if you have anything to declare. You just say you've got, you've got a pet and you've got all the vet papers up to date. The other thing is, how hard is it to get your hunting rifle or shotgun across the border? And again, it's, it's not hard at all. There's a couple of things you have to do. One is you can either go to the website. I would Google uh, non-resident firearm decoration. And this, this would pop up somewhere in, in that search. And you can print that off, fill it out, and you bring it to the border. When they, again, when they ask you if you have anything to declare, if you have any rifles, you tell them, yes, I have a shotgun or a rifle to declare. I've got to come in. I've got my declaration papers filled out, and you pay a fee. Simple as that. Now, when you get across the border with your rifle or your shotgun, you have to carry this every time you've got your gun. This stays with your gun, whether it's cased in your truck, in your cabin. If it's with you hunting, you have to have this decoration. The other thing you're going to need when you're hunting is your hunting license, whether it's small game, moose, bear, whatever it may be. You have to carry these two things with you while you're hunting everywhere you go. So simple rules to follow to get your gun and your dog across the border. Get it, get it, get it, get it, girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yep, yep, yep. Where's that one? Go get him, girl. Go get him. Go get him, girl. <laughs> There's another one! Oh, I missed that one! Just had three birds, got two of them! Fetch him up, Ricky! Go get him, girl! Go get him! 
Go get him, girl! Get him! Hitch him up! Hitch him up! Hitch him up! Hitch him up! Bring it in! Come! Come! Good girl! Here you go! Come! Give! 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 Good job! There's one! There it is! Good girl! Come! 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 Come on, girl! Come on, girl! Come on! Yes! Give! Give! That a girl! Yes! That is awesome! Good job! Nice work, Ricky. Yes! Feathers and all! Feathers and all! Good job, honey! Good job! Sweet! Wow, that was crazy. Saw one and actually came back. We were driving down this two-track road and saw one running and I came back and a lot of times there's more than one. We've actually only seen a single so far this, this week and that was the first time there was actually three birds. I got two out of three. I should have had the third one. But uh, it actually got over the top of the hill before I got a good crack at it. But I would never would have followed the one if it wasn't for her. That's why you have a dog. I think fell in some thick stuff. And I knew I got that one. I, th I thought I got that one, but I we couldn't find it at first. And then she came back and grabbed it. So, so much fun coming up here with a, with a dog. You got to try to get up to El Goma. There is grouse all across Ontario. We've experienced the Sunset Country region. There's a lot of birds and now we came to Algoma and it's the same story. Lots of birds. Good girl! That a girl! You jumped it! That a girl! Come on! Come on, girl! Yeah! That one's all you! That one's all you! Proud girl! Proud girl! Give! Good job! Good job! That a girl! Look at that! That's a nice, beautiful adult male! Look at that! Nice gray face! For that, you get a treat! Yes! I don't know what they like about those treats, but they sure do. I've tried them before, they're no good. <laughs> but they work for dogs, so. Another one for the pouch. I knew this road had to produce. This is just, this is the kind of, this is the exact kind of uh, forage that, th that grouse like. It's, you got some of the young trees mixed in with a lot of the pines and tamaracks and stuff like that. And they just, it's great cover. They roost in a lot of these pines and these adult, uh, birch trees and so forth, but uh, they like to eat a lot of this young stuff. So that's why you see them a lot around a lot of that type of uh, forage. So it's just looked like great cover. Got a lot of rolling hills and so forth. So another nice bird. Let's go Ricky. Nice work, Ricky. That's number five for the day. We have had an amazing trip up here in El Goma region. It has been flat out some of the best grouse hunting I've experienced. That's saying something. I mean, all across Ontario has amazing grouse hunting opportunities. I would recommend going to the El Goma Country website and checking out 
all the lodges that offer small game hunting and visit one of those lodges. Ricky and I had an amazing trip coming up here chasing grouse. <laughs>